Almost two months ago, Airshaper, a professional CFD business, released some CFD results of a Formula One car model. Originally a graphics exercise, they decided that they would run it in CFD and release it to members of the public to analyze. Here is my attempt at the analysis of their results. Initially, all models are mostly an aesthetic attempt at representing some reality. In this case, it's the 2022 Formula One regulations. There are aspects of this car that fall outside the regulations, but for an aerodynamic analysis exercise, or something looser, for only graphics, it really doesn't matter. Simply, this model will mostly have some aerodynamic characteristics of the 2020 rules as intended. As someone that has extensive experience working in aerodynamics like the Airshaper team, you would be confident that their aesthetic judgement would be pretty good, and the initial model represents workable aerodynamics. So this is the assumption I'll be using to spend a few hours working on this analysis. First, the information is provided and is available in a PDF report. It gives basic information on flow, the lift and drag numbers, along with the distribution front and rear. They were running the simulation at 55.6 meters per second. So with the table of forces, lift and drag coefficients of 0.896 and negative 1.523, the frontal area of 1.7 meters squared, the CLA and CDA is negative 2.59 and 1.52 respectively. With these basic numbers, Airshaper was able to set out redesigned objectives, like improving the front to rear distribution to 25%, increasing the overall downforce by 10%, and improving the lift to drag ratio to 2. Currently, these numbers have the front to rear distribution at 19.8%, which is far from desirable. I note now that the drag is hyped because the side pod and roll hoop inlets are blanked off. For example, the radiator would have a certain flow through them, these have none. Which isn't a huge problem, it's just worth mentioning. Changing that and increasing the downforce would likely get the lift to drag ratio close to 2. Without complicated internal flow ducting, adding boundary conditions to the simulations would be a fix. One observation is the front wing discontinuity. For the upper element, it is similar to the superseded regulations. This would mean the air around the nose would not be kicked up as much. It might also mean that the air gets to the start of the midsection of the car. It may not have been accelerated, that is, it is cleaner. Therefore, the side pods and floor could work that air more. The floor has three fences, and these fences are sinusoidal, and not pushing the air out to the side. However, these fences extend forwards from the floor's leading edge. Here, there is also no bib for the compliance plank. The floor body and side pod interface a long way back and is done smoothly. You could describe it as aesthetic. They don't have that more aggressive aerodynamic edge that would make them a little bit less attractive. Carrying on back, the side pod blends in with the rest of the chassis line with only a little undercut. Back to the floor. The mid floor is largely just the tunnel volume. The edge of the floor develops a tunnel itself, trying to preserve the pressure gradient of the floor. Then this extends into the diffuser without any kick. Most of the diffuser expansion is vertically, encouraging interaction between the floor and the rear wing. Unfortunately, the individual components of the car haven't been separated, so it's a little bit more difficult to extract their contribution in the results, it, but it's not really important at this stage. Usually a pressure and wall shear stress map is applied to the model, but unfortunately the model leaked. And because both sides of the surface has a colour, the graphics tries to map both sides, resulting in a mottling effect. Again, it doesn't really matter. It would just be easy to infer the flow over the surfaces, rather than using plane slicing. I'm guessing there is a way to remove that mottling, as Airshaper does this in their app. In this case, the mesh hasn't leaked, and you can see that there is a flow separation on the second and third element. I wouldn't have expected this much separation. Just before I was going to look at the elements profile, I noticed that the meshing process for the simulation joined the elements together, closing the gap that was supposed to be there. This would have a big effect on performance, and the stated aim of 25% improvement front to rear downforce distribution would likely be closer. It may also be all the difference. This again is an easy fix, and the next simulation would just refine the mesh of the front wing more, so it wouldn't happen. The only thing that I would say, fixing this, the air will be pulled inboard more than it is now, which means the wheel wake as well. Adding streamlines to the floor's inlet, it is a nice way of tracing where the air for the floor comes from. Apparent is the effect of the front wing's discontinuity. A little bit also comes from the front wheel wake. 
there is no wheel weight management bodywork around the lower side of the wheel. With the floor fences extending in front and above the floor's entrance, the high pressure field spills more dramatically than I would have come to expect. Despite the air impacting the outside of the outer fence, the pressure field between the fences is such that it spills out to the side creating a structure itself. It's by happenstance it is rotating in the correct direction to help seal the floor later on. However, the same high pressure volume spills more dramatically over the floor body. It's generally quite messy across the floor body before the side pod. The streamlines are really quite busy, so I thought the x-axis plane slice sequence would be better for illustrating how this area of the car works, as there is a complex set of interactions. I start just as the floor fences start, and after the front wheel. Here you will notice the flow inside the body of the car, only making it difficult to see. Here the high pressure field under the chassis is interacting with the wheel wake. Between the fences, the high pressure diminishes outboard. Moving along, the high pressure from the lateral expansion caused by the inner floor creates low pressure areas on the outer surfaces of the floor fences. Without the bib, on the floor's leading edge seems to be not as effective at creating an effective low pressure section under the early part of the floor, as would be expected. Comparing this centerline plot from the previous cars I've run, the high pressure spike isn't coupled with a significant low. Likely we are missing some early downforce here. There is also a directional aspect to the dissipation of the high pressure field. Having the floor fences misaligned with the airflow contributes to the mess above the floor. That messiness fades reasonably quickly, and now is a coherent flow structure off the outer fence. It is suggested that the side pod seems to have something to do with this, and the streamlines confirm it in some sense, dominating the flow above the floor. Under the car, these streamlines form one vortex structure off the inner fence. Air that enters the floor mostly exits the floor at the rear. Management of the floor edges doesn't seem to be important at the moment, with the floor fences providing basic flow management. Finishing off the X slices, it shows a vortex following the floor's edge. This would be a benefit. The floor doesn't leak until late when this vortex moves away from the edge. The outer floor kicks up late, lowering the pressure of the edge, just before the diffuse starts between the rear wheels. Here's tracing the vortex off the fence kink. The Z-plane slice animation probably shows how the floor works best for this case. First the pressure slice, second the velocity magnitude. You can see that there's no lateral expansion in the diffuser. Because of the mesh leak, the pressure and the wall shear stress maps aren't very clear in Paraview. So I went to Airshaper's website for their results and screenshot the underfloor maps. Basically, it's just showing that there's a vortex travelling along the floor. But it does show that the pressure at the beginning of the floor isn't as high as I would expect. The fences are providing some performance and the floor is well behaved. However, you would really want more from the front of the floor. The point of Airshaper releasing this project was, apart from publicity, was to get people to give their suggestions about improvements. Thus, here are mine to address some of the weaknesses touched on during the analysis. The area around the floor, chassis and fence interactions is a problem. The air entering the floor under the chassis is being pushed down into the road. The convention of the bib directs this air out to the side, also creating a pressure gradient under the bib that will continue back along the plank bringing the floor's low pressure forwards. That bib will now interact strongly with the inner fence making it more effective. Changing this and the fences will have a knock on effect to the characteristics of the floor. The air entering the floor through the fence gap will be faster and at a lower pressure. You don't want to slow this air down. One way to preserve this pressure gradient is through a vortex structure. Therefore, maintaining that structure is important. Also, the air currently entering the floor isn't being kicked out to the side by the fence. The second fence would be mostly responsible for this, and I think this should happen. The inner fence should be altered a bit, increasing the size of the vortex kink and pushing the reverse radius out, but not all the way out to the edge, leaving some mass flow at the side. A more aggressive sinusoidal fence could also seed another vortex. Pushing some air out to the side of the floor is likely going to change the mass flow rate under the floor. It's not likely going to have much of an effect here as the diffuser isn't being pushed hard, but it might be a benefit to change the shape of the midsection of the floor, making it a bit wider and more egg shaped bringing the fence vortex a little closer to this section. The expected improvements from these modifications would be to give an overall increase in the downforce with a minimal increase in drag. 
Most of that downforce should come from the front of the floor, so would contribute to the balance improvements sought by the air shaper modelers. Coupled with the fixing of the front wing mesh problem, the changes I suggest should come close to meeting all the targets Airshaper has set.